seemingly typical game night in Lawrence, Kansas. 60th straight sellout crowd jamming venerable Allen Fieldhouse, but the opponent anything but typical. Four months to the day since Hurricane Katrina struck, New Orleans continues its quest to get back on its feet. Presented by Kay Jewelers, the New Orleans privateers, whose season has been at best challenging and at worst harrowing in Lawrence to battle the young but talented Kansas Jayhawks. Dave Revson and Fran Fraschilla courtside with you in Lawrence. And Fran, it is hard to imagine a team going through more than New Orleans has gone through so far this year. Well, you're right, Dave. When you talk about adversity in college basketball, it usually means a three-game losing streak or an injury to your best player. What Monty Tao and his New Orleans team have been through, the utter devastation of this hurricane is not in the coach's handbook. Now, lots more on what New Orleans has been through throughout the game and that some of it will absolutely stun you but let's move on the court friend tell us who we should be keeping an eye on well in fact Monty Tao has lost his leading scorer Bo McCaleb for the rest of the season Wayne Williams has picked up the slack in his absence and for Kansas Brandon Rush only a freshman has been very productive for Bill Self the rest of the lineups for the privateers James Parlow the other guy to keep an eye on averaging 13 per game young man whose entire family lost everything in the hurricane for KU, the point guard spot's been the real issue. 174 assists, 158 turnovers as a team. Jeff Hawkins starts, they'll rotate several guys through. Christian Moody, his second start of the year. Well, Monty Tao said yesterday to me that part of our responsibility, friend, is to show people that New Orleans is still up and running, that the city and the school will go on. And this, a big step here as they play on national TV against Kansas, the opening tip controlled by the Jayhawks. And right off, we have an injury to one of the officials, Fred. Well, Ted Hillary got hurt, obviously, when the ball was thrown up. And he took a shot. Take a look at this, Dave. Opening tip off and down comes the elbow Nathaniel Parker caught him with his arm trainers are out there Ted Hillary veteran official and you know with all the complaining that you hear about people who want to continue the jump ball and don't like the alternating possession believe me referees you see Parker come down and Looks like he just whacked Ted Hillary. It's a nice round of applause as he stands up. It looks like he's saying he's going to continue. Tim Higgins came by and mouthed it to us. Tough guy. <laughs> but that's one of the that's one of the reasons that you don't really like. Referees don't want to throw that ball up every time. Not just because they can get, can get hurt, but also because it's tough to uh, to get it accurately up in the air. But uh, Ted Hillary looks like he is okay. So it'll be Kansas basketball. Just three seconds in here. The Jayhawks kind of an up and down year so far. Six and four. Very very young team. This is a team, Fran, whose top eight scorers are either freshmen or sophomores, and there's been some growing pain so far for Bill Self's club. Also searching for an identity. Are they a power team? Are they a transition team? I think that still needs to be played out for the Jayhawks. This is Russell Robinson. Now Hawkins swings it for Brandon Rush. Shot clock down under 10. Hawkins, top of the key. That doesn't go, and the rebound goes to the privateers in the person of Nathaniel Parker. Good, solid first possessions for New Orleans. They uh, are a small team, only one player above 6-4. Now the jumper on the way, no good by Williams. Rebound, though, controlled the inside, no good by Daney, and here comes Kansas. Inside Sasha Khan, and he gets the easy two. Sasha Khan, despite missing two games where he was ineffective with the flu, has been very solid inside for the Jayhawks this year. 
Native of Siberia, netting the first two points of the game. This is Parker working on Khan. A little pull up, no good. Knocked out of bounds, and it's going to be Kansas ball. As we take a look at one of the great little guys in the history of college basketball, Monty Tao. Monty Tao, the Pomeroy Naismith Award winner at 75. Kansas played at NC State, point guard on a national championship team. Right on that team with Tom Burleson. It was right. the long and short of it. David Thompson, Tim Stoddard, who pitched in the major leagues. Now Rush has it partially blocked. Battle inside, and it's going to be a foul against Kansas. It's going to go against Christian Moody. You made a great point about point guard play, Dave. Because Kansas doesn't have a point guard that can attack the lane, they have to get offense through their sets, and they don't get the easy baskets. Bill that, Self, that's been a concern of his. One of the challenges we talked about with Bill Self earlier today, and as I said, a lot of guys will be rotated through that position for the Jayhawks tonight. We'll keep an eye on how they do. Assisted turnover ratio for this team right around one to one, and that's just not good enough, Brad. Now Williams loses it, but they're going to say it went off Kansas, so it'll be Privateer's ball. Well, we mentioned at the top, Bo McCaleb, who's an outstanding player for New Orleans, averaging about 20 points a game. They've lost him with a broken hand for the season. One of the better players in the Sun Belt. This is McNeely with the shot clock at five. Parlo going to have to check one up, and he hits it. Nice that, three for James Parlo. That is his strength, Dave. He hit six against Vanderbilt in their last outing before Christmas. 42% three-point shooter on the year. Puts the privateers on top three, two. Robinson tries to answer inside the arc. No good, and here comes Parlo. New Orleans on the run. It's Williams hanging in the air. Can't get it to go, and con the rebound. Now Rush on the break. Through the lane, Rush can't get it. Gets his own rebound. Now Khan, no good, but he's fouled. Looks like Parker got it. Well, if Monty Tao's going to get offense, a lot of it is going to come from deep. The penetration by McNeely and the kick out, and Parlo shoots that from two feet beyond the three. A good look at a catch and shoot player. Sasha Khan going to the free throw line. At 66% on the year. Young man who came to the U.S. from Siberia as a high school sophomore in hopes of gaining, gaining an academic scholarship to college and ended up as one of the hottest prospects as a basketball player in the country. Well, he played at a very good high school program, Florida Air Academy, well coached by Auburn Caparo. Told me a while back his mom's still not totally sold on this basketball thing. So don't get carried away with the basketball too much. Well, it's too late to start hockey, even though he is from Siberia. Now Parlo. This is McNeely, the Canadian. He misses that one. And it's gonna be a foul inside on New Orleans. It goes against Sean Malloy. That'll be his first. One interesting thing about Kansas so far has been the aggressiveness of Brandon Rush, Dave. Leading scorer for the Jayhawks, a brilliant freshman, but only taking nine shots a game. Guy shooting 60% from the three. Bill Self wants to get him to be more of a catalyst for this offense. Part of that great freshman class, and another one of those guys is in as well. Julian Wright wearing number 30, checking in for the first time. And Rush misses that one badly. It's going to go to New Orleans. And I'm going to tell you, although that was a bad shot, at least you can see that there's a little bit more aggressiveness on his part. Again, Kansas is one of seven early on, Fred. It's been good, solid defense by New Orleans. Small team. They've done a good job relatively keeping the Jayhawks out of the blue area in the paint. We're talking about the point guard rotation, number 20, Stephen Vincent in for Kansas, a former walk-on who's earned a scholarship and earned a lot of playing time lately. McNeely. Shot clock down to seven, Manning. That doesn't go, and the rebound to right. This is Rush. A long two, no good. Manning the rebound. I 
think over the course of the next month or so, that's okay. Bag his pivot foot right there, Manning did. Gets away with it if Parlo gets the hoop. This Kansas needs some go-to guys offensively. This is Vincent. Lawrence native. Hawkins. Got the three. Good ball movement right there. One of the things you get when you dump it inside, oftentimes you'll get the inside out three. Now Hawkins the steal. Leaves it for Rush. And it's an offensive foul on Brandon Rush. So New Orleans hanging around with Kansas. It's a 7-5 game early on here in Lawrence. Basketball Championship coming in March. Accidents happen. Nice to know the Jetta received the top overall crash rating in its class from the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety. Breakfast Bistro Sandwich. Sonic's got it, others don't. Start your morning with Sonic's new Breakfast Bistro Sandwiches. Eggs and cheese with bacon, sausage, or ham on Sonic's new toasted ciabatta bread. Buy a reloadable My Sonic card today and get the gift of great food. Nicorette Fresh Mint is different. It's the first and only stop smoking gum coated with a cool burst of mint flavor. In fact, consumers prefer the taste two to one over any stop smoking gum. It tastes great and fights cravings fast. Nicorette Fresh Mint. Start chewing, start quitting. You the help desk? What seems to be the problem, officer? Traffic. Traffic? Traffic. What do you need? What do you got? I got wireless sensors and congestion flow modeling. What'll it do? Cut down traffic. Will it work? Works. Nice work. Just doing my job. Have a nice day. ESPN 2's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Volkswagen. On the road of life, there are passengers and there are drivers. And Sonic. It's not just good, it's Sonic good. New Orleans, two of eight from the field. Kansas, Bill Self's team actually doing it one worse at two of nine. And this is the team, as we look at the coach, Fran, searching for an identity. Well, I think you're right. You see top 10, top eight scores are freshmen and sophomores. And David, when you have this kind of talent, I think Bill Self's biggest challenge right now, do you want to be a running team or do you want to be a power team? You don't have enough time in practice to be great at both. And I think he's more comfortable being a power team that runs off its defense. But that's still something they're searching for. And the other thing, a couple new faces for this team in the last week or so. Roderick Stewart, the transfer from USC, becoming eligible. Darnell Jackson, who had some off-court issues, is now eligible. The rotation is at 13 guys, Fred. Is that too many? Well, it is. And Bill Self has always been comfortable with nine. We talked earlier today, maybe 10, but more likely nine. Shot clock down under 10. Carlo trying to create some room. Working around Vincent. Gets it to Malloy. Ball on the floor and a turnover for the Privateers. You see Vincent's value to this team right off the bat. And then Kansas turns it right back over. And Vincent another near steal there. Knocked away by Kahn. And it's going to be Kansas ball. Well, again, Kansas not smooth on the offensive end yet. They don't really have the go-to guy. But defensively, Dave, they've been solid all year. Under 40% field goal defense. They're aggressive with their ball pressure. They're a good rebounding team. And Wright, the freshman, called for the walk. See, Julian Wright had sealed up the lane and they must look inside 
I think with Khan and Giles, particularly when you see C.J. Giles in the game, they have a low post presence, but it takes an art form to be a post feeder. It's something these young players haven't yet developed. As you were mentioning, too, New Orleans undersized, and this might be a good game to work on. That is, to me, that will be their bread and butter. Now Malloy is knocked away on the way up. Comes to McNeely. Up and under move is rejected by Khan. Shot clock does not reset, and Manning hits the three. Well, the junior college transfer, really not a three-point shooter. That's the first of the year, in fact, for Manning. Now one of four behind the arc on the season. New Orleans with the lead, but not for long. Khan answers on the other end. Sasha Khan now has six of Kansas's nine points. Now and again, Stephen Vincent contributing with an excellent post feed. We talked about Khan's positioning. He's open in there, but you got to get it to him. Kansas ball in the turtle. Watch this, Dave. Good positioning by Khan. Look how he works his man up the lane. And the drop off by Vincent is perfect. Khan has just got to turn and kiss it off the glass. Now, Vincent, the former walk on, 19 assists, just four turnovers. Meanwhile, Hawkins and Mario Chalmers, who we haven't seen yet, have combined for 61 assists and 51 turnovers. Right? Well, Stephen Vincent is one of those guys that understands what he can do and what he can't do, stays away from the things he's not good at. The Kansas ball still 20 to shoot. Jayhawks on top, 9-8 early. A little alley-oop there to C.J. Giles and picks it back out. You see Julian Wright had a chance to dump it in. He didn't do it. Shot clock under 10. Robinson trying to create. Well, the combo guard from Rice High School in New York, he is one of those Jayhawks that uses that dribble to attack the lane. That time, knife between two defenders. McNeely can't get it to go. Tipped up. And in, that was Nathaniel Parker with his first two. They call the carry there. So it's a Kansas turnover. Well, so much of college basketball is attacking the defense off the dribble right there. And Russell Robinson with a good job. And I love the privateers so far battling on the glass. And that time, the putback by Nathaniel Parker. Very quick off his feet. The former junior college transfer, his third year in the program. Can't afford to get these guys in foul trouble if you're Monty Tao. Doesn't have a lot of size inside. That compounded by the loss of Ben Elias, 6'10 junior, who's done for the year with an injury. You mentioned the loss of McCaleb, devastating, but Elias certainly hurts him as well. The clock is not moving. Which is an issue, and now is moving after the whistle. <laughs> Right now. All season long, the ESPN family of networks will chronicle a great basketball moment from each Division I school. Tonight, one of the most memorable moments ever in NCAA tourney history. Stay tuned. ESPN News Pride of the Program coming up. those guys oh that's our network it's the most reliable comes with the phone do i like oh you no we're good cool there's only one reason to choose a wireless company it's the network and now you can ring in the new year with a new lg camera phone with all the latest features plus a second camera phone free verizon wireless Accidents happen. Nice to know the Jetta received the top overall crash rating in its class from the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety.
KFC's Flavor Station puts you in charge. Ever since KFC started dipping his boneless wings in honey barbecue, he's yelling, I'm in charge. Yeah, you with the boneless wings? Are you saying you can get those dipped in any sauce you want? I choose my sauce, so I am in charge. Now get boneless wings at KFC's Flavor Station. 100% breast meat boneless wings dipped any way you want. Choose from our classic honey barbecue sauce. Fiery buffalo or sweet and spicy. Try six boneless wings for $2.99 or $18 for $8.79. Be the boss, choose your sauce only at KFC. It's a one-point lead for the Jayhawks in Lawrence over New Orleans. During the course of the season, the ESPN family of networks will showcase a great basketball moment from all 326 Division I schools. The countdown will take us from A to Z. Time now for ESPNU's Pride of the Program. Tonight in the spotlight, Evansville. Gary Payton did all he could. The Oregon State star forced overtime from the stripe. But the Purple Aces were too much on that March day in 1989. Sharp shooting for Evansville in overtime was the difference as the Purple Aces scored the upset. You know, Dave, those uh, those jerseys, those Purple Aces jerseys go back to the days of Aaron McCutcheon, and he had a, he had a guard by the name of Jerry Sloan who wasn't too bad. A pretty good player. Yep. I think it's a mistake. I think they should have kept the T-shirts. Well, Steve, Steve Murfeld is building, rebuilding that program. That league, the Missouri Valley, is so good right oh. now. That is not a league you want to go on the road in. Yep. That's for sure. This is Parker. Kinds of trouble down low. McNeely. He has it blocked by Giles. Ball on the floor. And it's going to be a foul against the Privateers. It's going to go against Jamie McNeely, his first. Don't forget Holiday Hoops Saturday on ESPN and ESPN2. Top 25 teams in action, 430 Eastern, Alabama and Oklahoma. Then 6 Eastern on ESPN2, St. Joe's and number 8 Gonzaga. It's Holiday Hoops presented by K. Jewelers. As Julian Wright hits the pull-up for his first two. Well, Julian Wright, the one guy that's caught, sought, he's caught between being a small forward and a power forward in Bill Self's system right now, but he's versatile because he can play away from the basket. The block there. Parker getting it back and getting fouled. C.J. Giles has really come on as a shot block. At least two blocks in eight different games this year. Saw Parker trying to challenge him, but he's done a really good job of staying on his feet. Trouble getting it in for the privateers. They get it to Parker. New Orleans hanging around a program that has been through so much this year. We'll tell you more about that as we continue yet to play their first true home game. They'll do that Saturday against crosstown rival Tulane. Jeremy Case in the game and making his presence felt with the three. Jeremy Case had played very little until the last game. Hit three threes against Northern Colorado. Big lift, Dave, offensively. It's the Jayhawks on top by six. There's a game they want you to see. Then there's the game we play. Brutal hits and injuries. Cheerleaders and partying. Money and politics. Anything goes as long as you follow one sacred rule. Win. At any cost. Blitz the league. Rated M for mature. Bill Self's team opening up a six point lead. 16 10. Kansas over New Orleans. McNeely. It's Dusty Drinks. And now Parlo. Riggs, Indiana native, trains the three. Shoots it like a boy from Indiana. Had a career high, 12 at Mississippi State. Can really shoot the ball. Robinson missing that one, and here comes Driggs the other way. 
from the Kokomo, Indiana area, which is also the area that produced Monty Tao. Big thrill for Griggs and Monty Tao. Just got done playing at Purdue before Christmas. Plays Monty Tao. Saw many games as a child before he went on to NC State. Parker's going to try it. Doesn't go and pace. The little guy comes out of there with the board. Now he nearly throws it away. It's knocked out of bounds. It'll be Kansas ball. Kansas has done a very good job of their interior defense. New Orleans, not a big team, hasn't gotten much inside and has been relegated to the long jump shot. Take a look there at Bill Self. Third year at Kansas. Five league titles for him in the past seven years. Of course, that's been three different programs. Giles inside. He's got it blocked by Malloy. Nice defensive play there by Sean Malloy. Yeah, love the post speed, but Giles got to take it to the defender's body. Gave him too much ball to work with. Drake's going to try another one. That doesn't go. And Hawkins clears for Kansas. Case going to try another one. Giles the rebound. So we talked about the rotation. Jeremy Case has screwed it up even more because he knocked down three threes against Northern Colorado. And now Vincent, another guy who stepped up, he hits the three. Uh, Bill Self told me today that his two most productive guards in practice have been Case and Vincent, Dave, and they've gotten a lot of minutes in this game. Malloy off glass, no good. Giles the rebound. Well, every shot in the paint has been challenged by Kansas. Oh. Hawkins inside the right. He lays it in and draws the foul. Well, we've seen this time and time again. When you have a guard that can attack the defense with the dribble, you are going to create offense for your teammates. It breaks the defense down, and then Julian Wright with an excellent catch and the finish in traffic. Good play by Jeff Hawkins. Foul went on Parker, his second. Julian Wright to the free throw line. Big 12 preseason freshman of the year. has had an Achilles heel this season. It's been scoring droughts. It's important right now that they don't let Kansas get away too much. Rush the rebound off the miss. Kansas trying to build on what is now an eight-point lead. Rush for three. Well long. It's knocked out of bounds, and it's going to be privateer's ball. Uh, coming up, their lives forever change. The privateers take their first trip back to campus. We will show you the stunning scene just ahead. Accidents happen. Nice to know the Jetta received the top overall crash rating in its class from the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety. Get all the college hoops you can handle with the ESPN Full Court Pay-Per-View Package. Unbelievable! Catch the free preview January 6th through the 13th. Yes! Top conferences. Critical matchups you won't get without ESPN Full Court. Hoop 7 from the people who live and breathe college basketball. ESPN Full Court. Watch on TV or online. To order, call your pay-per-view provider or go to ESPN.com keyword full court. Now, back by popular demand at Central, Kia Rios for $58.88. Celebrate $58.88 at Central Kia in Plano, Irving, and Louisville. Or pay just $149 a month for a new Kia Rio with Kia's 10-year warranty. one 866 central the Do you have a job? Do you have $199? Do you want three grand minimum for your trade? You can be approved. Guaranteed. one 866 central to 
Celebrate 5888. Head straight to Central Kia in Plano, Louisville, and Irving now. When the IRS levied my business and personal accounts, I didn't know where to turn. My CPA recommended American Tax Relief. If you owe over $10,000 to the IRS or state, call American Tax Relief for a free consultation. Look, the IRS is offering you a one-time opportunity to settle your debt. This is your one second chance. Use it well. I thought I was going to lose my business, but American Tax Relief got me a second chance. Call 800-294-1251 for your free consultation. Kansas leading New Orleans by eight. That is Mark Downey. New Orleans assistant coach and also a videographer for what you're about to see some unbelievable scenes this is the first time the New Orleans basketball team went back to campus after Hurricane Katrina you can see the end of October these were the apartments that the players lived in and you can see absolute and utter devastation I mean completely ravaged by the storm a third of the university underwater after the storm, the team relocated to Tyler, Texas for the first semester the University of Texas at Tyler. Had to start completely from scratch, Fran. The players lost everything. They had no clothes. They had no equipment. Monty Tau is telling me that when they got to Tyler, the only pair of shoes Jacob Manning had were slippers. I mean, that's how bad it was. Well, so many people stepped up, including the University of Kansas, who scheduled this game. You know, normally, Dave, for a game like this, you get thirty, forty, forty-five thousand dollars. Kansas chipped in not only with a seventy-five thousand dollar guarantee, but also equipment for the women's team. We moved the women's tournament from New Orleans here to Lawrence in mid-December. A lot of different people stepped up. A lot of Monty Towns, former players, and teammates at NC State, Florida. Joey Lawrence, one of his former players, was tremendous. New Orleans ball off the turnover in an eight-point game. Manning with the jumper. That doesn't go. Rush the rebound. Well, New Orleans will have to make some jumpers because they're not going to get anything easy in the lane. Not trying to lob there to Moody. It's knocked away. We talked about post feeding being art form and Sasha Khan telegraphed that pass from yesterday. The privateers converged. Now Parlo. Jumper by Triggs is no good. Rebound though comes down and Malloy's gonna go to the line. Well you were talking, Fran, about the importance of this game for New Orleans and the money, frankly, gets them also some national TV exposure. Interesting though, New Orleans had to dole out a small guarantee earlier this year. They brought Southeastern Oklahoma State, which is a Division II school in Durant, Oklahoma, brought them to Tyler for a game. Southeastern Oklahoma State, which is a school I can tell you firsthand from covering them mm -hmm. when I work small market television, it's not a school where the athletic department is exactly overflowing with money. They felt UNO's plight and they actually donated a portion of the check that New Orleans gave them back to the Katrina Relief Fund. So everyone from the big powerhouses like Kansas to the schools like Southeastern Oklahoma State doing their part to help get all of New Orleans and specifically this program back on its feet. Well, and remember, this Kansas game was added late. They still have already played this year. Vanderbilt, LSU, Mississippi State, and Purdue. And Monty Tao told me today, he said, hey, I'm a competitor. I want to win. So this is no fun right now. But uh, we're talking about games, and this is the playground of life. What they've gone through is far more serious. He's trying another one. That's not there. And then Rush has it stripped on the way up by Parlo. Eight-point game. New Orleans just ice cold, though, from the field. Malloy misses that one. Rush the rebound. Hawkins. Good job that time. Ball reversal. Three or four different Jayhawks. Touched the basketball, it moved the defense, and Hawkins got the open 10 footer. Now the steal by Hawkins, but he turned it right back over. Second in for the Jayhawks is Stephen. Kansas Benson. is not a selfish for basketball team. Jeremy. They're still looking for a go-to player or two, but you see good crisp offense. Yeah. Yeah. 
Barnes knocks down the short jumper. Well, New Orleans, talking about the shooting lows, Fran. Two of 14 inside the arc. They're three of nine on threes, and that's what saved him so far. This is a three. That one doesn't go, though, from Wayne Williams. But New Orleans gets it right back. Carlo inside the wall. You missed it. He may have got bumped from behind. No call. Williams, though, this the same. He wasn't sure whether to dunk it or lay it in. And that type of indecision leads to a miss many times. This is Manning. And the drought continues. Vincent. Nice hustle by Manning to track it down. That ball on the floor. And it's going to be a held ball. And that'll go back over to the privateers. Well, I like the effort that New Orleans has played with. Again, we talked about the difficult schedule they've played. So they're not going to be intimidated by Kansas. But they have had difficulty scoring at times. And Again, not to belabor it, but Bo McCaleb, he's a guy, David, that came on the scene as a freshman, a local native, an outstanding freshman year. Pretty good sophomore year, averaging 20 points a game early in this season, and he's lost for the season, but he'll get his junior year back. And when we talk about the devastation of Katrina, and obviously that's first and foremost the biggest story for New Orleans but you compound that in terms of the athletic portion of what's going on here by losing far and away your best player I mean, this guy scored a thousand points in his first two years that's right preseason player of the year to Sunbelt as a sophomore McNeely misses Vincent coming the other way as New Orleans has gone seven and a half minutes now scoring just two hoops that's Jackson inside we told you about him Coming back a few games ago, he misses on the turnaround. Now the moan from the crowd was because they thought Sasha Khan had Jackson inside. But after that last turnover by Khan, he was reluctant to throw it back in there. Williams backs away. It's going to be New Orleans ball. New Orleans is a set play team. They've done a pretty good job of running their stuff. They're getting some good looks from the perimeter, but you've got to knock those jumpers down. And I still think when you play against a team with shot blockers that you need to go right at them. Try to get those Kansas big men in foul trouble. So that New Orleans field goal drought continuing. Steven Vincent, a little blood, it appears, there on the elbow. So. Well, this is a very similar situation to Kansas's Pepperdine game before Christmas where they played outstanding defense offensively also only 23 points in 16 minutes. Not what Bill Self is looking for. The heralded freshman Mario Chalmers going to check in for Kansas. Seeing his first action. Chalmers who if you watch the McDonald's All-America game last year was absolutely brilliant in that one. Foul there on Russell Robinson. That'll be number two on him. So New Orleans having some trouble putting the ball in the basket, but it's still just a 10-point game. 23-13 in Lawrence. Tomorrow night at 7, a showcase between perennial powerhouses Miami and LSU in the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. Then at midnight, it's Bowl Central on College Game Day Final. On ESPN2 at 7.30, the playoffs and the number one draft pick are at stake. EA Sports NFL matchup breaks down all the scenarios. Then at 8, more holiday hoops, Kentucky hosts Ohio. It's all on tomorrow night. For all the latest all the time, turn to ESPN News. Somewhere along the way, the closet exploded into our bedroom. A new year calls for a new organization. At the Home Depot, you'll find everything you need to make the most of your space. Whether you're redoing your closet with new shelving and moth-repelling totes made with real cedar chips, customizing your garage with our exclusive Stanley storage system, or simply packing away the holidays. At the Home Depot, getting organized has never looked better. At the Home Depot, you can do it, we can help. This December, Nissan's got you covered from A to Z.
Nissan's A to Z year-end sales event. Get year-end deals on Altima, Armada, Frontier, Maxima, Murano, Pathfinder, Quest, Sentra, Titan, Xterra, Z. Like 2,000 cash back on the Nissan Xterra 2006 Motor Transport Utility of the Year. Style, performance, value. From A to Z. She's absolutely perfect. And the best part, in each hand, she has a cold bud light. Good day, gentlemen. What a waste of two bud lights. <laughs> Refreshingly smooth bud light. Always worth it. The Venus de Milo! Scott Reese, Steve Lavin, Rick Majerus back in the studio. Coming up on the Halftime Report, we'll talk about the need for speed in college basketball. And on the opening night of the Pac-10 conference season, we'll break down the Pac-10. Coach, what do you have? Well, this is usually throw down Thursday, but this has to become teamwork Thursday <laughs> for Arizona if they're going to be re re reigning Pac-10 champs again. And then you're going to have to incorporate more players into your tack of your Stanford as well. And your tie gives it away, Scott. But we're going to talk about the team that has a chance to win the Pac-10 and get the two-seed out west. Totally inadvertent, I assure you. Rever, we'll see you at halftime. All right. The uh -oh. wardrobe being called into question. That's well, what I like. We can't see it, but I hope it's a purple tie because I love the Washington Huskies. We'll find out more at the half. It's 23-13 here, Kansas. Now Parker. Crowd wants a walk, and instead it's a foul. Yep, Bill Self a quite unhappy. The reason it's a foul, and Sasha Khan does this a lot, is instead of putting his hands straight up to the ceiling, he brings his hands down on the offensive player. This is going to be called a foul. Now keep your eye on him. If he stays vertical on the shot, okay, it's okay. But he reaches down, and he does that a lot, and that's just the inexperience of a young postman. You want Parker to shoot the ball over your outstretched arms and don't bail him out by fouling. Second foul on Sasha Khan. He will sit down. Julian Wright comes back in as Parker missed the first free throw. Senior out of Rosedale, New York. As you said, Fran Odessa Community College and injured last year, wrist and foot injuries, missed all but four games, but really counted on this year due to the lack of size, particularly due to the injury to Elias. Uh, he redshirted in junior college, and Monty Tao said they're going to hope to try to get a sixth year back for him. And that would be uh, fortuitous, for sure, for the privateers. Foul there on McNeely. I really want to keep an eye now on Mario Chalmers and just see if he continues to mature as a point guard. that Bill Self was saying earlier today is he wants to give Chalmers some more time off the ball too as more of a wing player. Chalmers missing the three right there. Well, he has not shot the ball well this year, under 30% from three. And has not been crisp yet in running the offense. Now Parlo, he has seven. Nice catch and shoot guy, and they've stayed in this game. As Chalmers turns it over, we remind you more holiday hoops tomorrow night on ESPN2 at 8 Eastern. The Ohio Bobcats, one of the more heralded mid-majors this year in the country, taking on number 19, Kentucky Holiday Hoops, presented by K Jewelers. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Well, how about Kentucky taking Rajon Rondo off the ball and putting him at the two spot? A similar concept to yeah. what Bill Self was talking about with Chalmers. A lot of these guys come in thinking as thinking they're point guards, but they were scorers in high school, and it's a difficult adjustment to go from being a scorer to a playmaker. Shot clock at three. Wow. So Williams jacks it up and hits it. First three for their leading scorer, Wayne Williams. And Dave, this is the dilemma that Kansas has had all year. They themselves have had scoring droughts, so. New Orleans now on a little bit of a run. Kansas not able to put them away early. New Orleans staying around, and then you see Williams freezes the defender, knocks down the jumper. Uh, Wayne Williams, a harrowing hurricane tail. The 
his girlfriend, Sheena Hanks, his son, Wayne, were visiting him from Georgia. They got in just as everyone was evacuating. Now, Wayne has no car. They had a lot of luggage, three bodies. No one really had room for them. They decided to try to ride out the storm in their campus apartment along with teammate Jeremy Davis. They spent two days in their apartment as the flood waters rose. No electricity. The food began to spoil. Made their way through the water to an area where helicopters were picking people up. They thought those helicopters were headed for Baton Rouge. As it turns out, the helicopters left them on an interstate overpass in New Orleans where supposedly they were going to be bused to Houston three days, Fran, mm. passed on that the concrete of that interstate. Right. They had no food. They had some water. It was an absolutely harrowing experience as Rush hits the beautiful reverse there. And Williams actually broke down briefly today as he recounted the scene. He said people were literally dropping dead around him. He saw people put in body bags, and he said he was absolutely convinced that he and his family were going to die. He considers himself unbelievably fortunate to be alive. And he also told me that, honestly, he's not overjoyed to be back in New Orleans. He mm -hmm. said the images of people dying are still in his head, friend, and that the horror he felt over the possibility of losing his family is something that gets replayed over and over every day for him. It was really a harrowing tale to listen to. No, even going back as they will tomorrow morning is not going to be a pleasant experience, I think, in many ways. Now Rush, who hit the nice hoop earlier, loses that one. Take a look at that hoop from Brandon Rush. Well, of course, it came off the dribble penetration. Something that's important to Kansas. Shot clock at seven. So Robinson puts it up next. Well, a good sign. Russell Robinson, the sophomore, really has improved his long range shooting from a year ago. Chalmers, the near steal there on McNeely, but it's going to be New Orleans ball. Even in talking to assistant coach Andy Colville today, he said, he said, Fran, you can't understand what it's like. It's hard to describe to people, even now, what it's like. Now off the steal, and Chalmers. Well, just a sloppy pass, but an alert play by the freshman from Anchorage. So the lead back up to 11 now. minute of the first half. Carlo has it blocked by Robinson. Kansas trying to get a little separation right before the break. Right. Well, we talked about scoring droughts for Kansas. They've picked it up. They've cracked this game open. Their defense has been solid. Here comes Kansas on the break. Two more for Chalmers. Well, Robinson and Chalmers, the defensive pressure in the backcourt, have broken this game open. And you saw the unselfishness of the high school All-American Brandon Rush making the correct play. One more chance for Hacks. Now time expires before the jam there from right. But the biggest lead of the game now, 15 points for Kansas. Eight different Jayhawks have scored, showing off some of the balance of the depth that we talked about. An 11-0 run to end the half puts New Orleans now behind by 15. It's 34-19, Kansas at the break. Now let's send it to Scott Reese and the gang with our halftime report. Scott. All right, Reverend, the Jayhawks with a flurry there to finish the first half. And uh, welcome in, everyone, to the Halftime Report. Scott Reese joined by Steve Lavin and Rick Majerus. Pac-10 opens play this evening. We will talk about that in the coming minutes. We'll get the uh, all-Steve Lavin speed demon uh, group as well. But uh, first, some other news around the sports world. And uh, we begin in Indianapolis. Tony Dungy rejoined his football team today, just two days after the uh, funeral of his son James, who died a week ago of an apparent suicide. Dungy is expected to be on the sideline for the season finale against the Cardinals this Sunday. 
Elsewhere in the world of football, Carson Palmer is going to be a Bengal for a long, long time. They reworked his contract. He can now make up to $118.75 million in salary and bonuses over the next nine years. The move helps clear up some salary cap room for the Bengal franchise. Just getting started here on the halftime report. We'll talk about UCLA as possibly one of the teams to beat in the college hoops world, Pac-10, and the speed demons of the land as well. This exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Nissan, who invites you to shift the way you move through the world, and Radio Shack. This holiday, don't just get a gift, get the right gift at Radio Shack. They played 11 guys, and the difficulty is they, their leading scorer had six points. Eight different guys scored, but uh, still, when you have this many bodies to try to rotate in, in, and, in and out, it's not easy. And we didn't even see Micah Downs or Rod Stewart that half. There you see the numbers. Eight different players scoring. Meanwhile, New Orleans really struggled offensively. In fact, hit more threes than they did twos. Four of 11 behind the arc, three of 20 inside. Also more turnovers than baskets in the first half as Robinson's gonna go to the strike. It's fouled there by James Parlow. Kansas with a nice job coming out of the timeout. Good set play. Robinson had the angle to drive. You know, the, the, the maddening inconsistency of Kansas, Dave, it goes like this. 23 points in 17 plus minutes where they struggle to score and then the 11-0 run in the half. Take a look at our first half stats and what jumps out at you there, friend. Well, obviously, New Orleans not, not able to get the ball into the lane to score easy. And everything has been a tough, contested shot from the perimeter. Robinson hitting one of two. He now has a half dozen. And the lead, the biggest it's been at 16. Interesting, Mario Chalmers starts the second half. Only played four minutes. There's the block by Wright, also starting the second half. Rush out ahead of the pack, and he has it knocked away by Parlow. But it ends up in the hands of Darnell Jackson against his first two. That was a good pass ahead by Mario Chalmers. Very underrated play right there but he kicked it ahead and allowed Brandon Rush to get out and transition. New Orleans trying not to let this one slip away and they turn it over. Chalmers. The Elliott Rush. Jackson the follow. Well he needed to give that up a little sooner. That should have been a bounce pass to Rush. But take it take it back one play. You see the block shot on the drive by Wright. Chalmers comes up with it, and then the kick ahead to Rush, who loses it, and Darnell Jackson cleans up the mess. Rush misses the first free throw, Fred. And David Chalmers had the easy bounce pass to Rush for the basket, and instead he passed the lob, and that was not something that Rush was ready for. Three points now for Brandon Rush. It's a double score at 38 to 19. And Chalmers gets whistled for the foul. First team foul. Kansas broke that game open in the late first half with quick hands. Their defense to start has been outstanding this second half. The block inside. And it's going to be Kansas ball. Well, 11 blocks and slightly over a half. Eight blocks. It's a 15-0 run here now, Fred, for the Jayhawks. Well, it's been really set up by the Kansas defense. Quick hands, good pressure on the ball, and nothing easy inside for the privateers. Chalmers now right off glass. Points now for Julian Wright. And Monty Town needs to talk things over as Kansas has blown this one open against the Privateers. The lead now up to 21. It's 40 to 19 here in Lawrence. Julian Wright, the freshman, making his presence felt. Georgia, West Virginia, the Nokia Sugar Bowl, Monday on ABC. 
She's absolutely perfect. And the best part, in each hand, she has a cold bud light. Good day, gentlemen. What a waste of two bud lights. <sighs> Refreshingly smooth Bud Light. Always worth it. The Venus de Milo! Some days my bad knee would ache so much I couldn't go anywhere. I'd plug in a heating pad. I still couldn't go anywhere. Ugh, I hate irony. But I love this Thermacare heat wrap for knees. It heats up. Feel it. Love this. And the heat sinks deep into my stiff, aching knee. The pain melts away. Oh. Whoever thought of this, you are invited to my house where I will barbecue something. It's like a heating pad without the cord. I can leave my house. So why am I hanging around here? They call it the season of hope, the season of joy, the season of light. When parents seem more like children and children more like angels. And on behalf of your good neighbors at State Farm, we want to wish you and yours all the hope, joy, and light the season has to bring. Make this a December shield truly remember at the December to Remember sales event, where you'll find the best values of the year on your favorite Lexus vehicles. See your Lexus dealer. It has been a trying season for Monty Tao and New Orleans. The after effects of Hurricane Katrina dramatically affecting this team. They trail Bill Self in Kansas 40 to 19 thanks to a 17-0 Jayhawks run. New Orleans trying to get something going here offensively, Fred. Well, it's been quick, quick hands by Kansas, and they've blocked shots that has opened this game up. That was Julian Wright with another one inside. And Nathaniel Parker finally ends the drought. Again, stemming a 17-0 run. Robinson's miss now. Rebounded by Williams, and New Orleans trying to chip away at this lead. Williams, quick hands there by Wright. That's Chalmers. Not there. Inside, though, Jackson has it knocked away. Well, Jackson with an opportunity didn't convert. Harlow. That time over, Wright doesn't go. And Manning is grabbed by Julian Wright. You see a little bit of the in inconsistency of Kansas. We talked earlier, Dave. Bill Self not sure if his team is going to be a power team or a transition team. Their defense has really keyed their transition, but they've got to be more effective in the half court going into Big 12 play. Darnell Jackson with a chance to score inside, didn't convert. Here you see what they've done defensively, and it's been outstanding. This hasn't been the problem at all, Fred. Not at all. No, they've played solid defense all year. Remember, they've lost four games by a total of 18 points, three of them by three or less. So they've been in ball games. Off the Malloy miss. Kansas tries to build on the lead. It's 40 21. You see if they recognize the zone now, a matchup zone. Nice job by Mario Chalmers behind the zone. Jackson snuck into that short corner. Four now for Jackson, who was suspended for the first nine games by the NCAA. Received about $5,000 worth of impermissible benefits from a KU booster dating back to his high school days in Oklahoma. Now off the miss by Robinson. On the run, pretty hoop for McNeely. Well, Williams with a nice dish in traffic, threaded the needle, and McNeely with a nice finish. To finish up on the Jackson story, important to note that booster has been disassociated now from the Kansas program. 
as Jackson hits another one. So four quick points for him. He has six. Gives Bill Self another big body to go with Giles and Khan inside and Christian Moody. As Self said in no uncertain terms today, he's a guy who's going to contribute. He's going to fit into this rotation. Spin move there by Williams. And Russell Robinson got him. That's number three on Russell Robinson. Bill Self's team on top by 21. Is this a help desk? Yes. We need some help. With what? It's our prototype. Forget prototypes. How do we test our new design? Virtual simulations, on-demand supercomputing. We're a small company. That sounds expensive. It's not. That's expensive. Yeah, that, that is expensive. Hey, uh, can we get a ride somewhere? The party is just getting started. We're going to be rich, people. On a treasure-filled DVD with deleted scenes and more, Paul Walker, Jessica Alba, Into the Blue. On DVD and for PSP now. Somewhere along the way, the closet exploded into our bedroom. A new year calls for a new organization. At the Home Depot, you'll find everything you need to make the most of your space. Whether you're redoing your closet with new shelving and moth-repelling totes made with real cedar chips, customizing your garage with our exclusive Stanley storage system, or simply packing away the holidays, at The Home Depot, getting organized has never looked better. At The Home Depot, you can do it, we can help. This is the one I was telling you about. Dude, you can get that same one online for like 120 Frosties. With all the delicious 99 cent choices on Wendy's Super Value Menu, you'll see dollars in a whole new way. Here you go. 75 Junior Bacon Cheeseburgers. For 99 cents, get Wendy's famous Junior Bacon Cheeseburger made fresh, hot off the grill. Crispy chicken nuggets or our new Junior Barbecue Cheeseburger, all on Wendy's Super Value Menu. Honey, you look like a million crispy chicken nuggets. Do Wendy's, and for 99 cents, do what tastes right. Introducing mobile ESPN. It's way more than a phone. Holiday Hoops presented by K Jewelers, and they're in a festive mood in Lawrence as the Jayhawks have opened the lead to 21. More where this came from on Saturday. A couple games for you, 4.30 Eastern on ESPN, Alabama and Oklahoma, then 6 Eastern ESPN 2, Gonzaga coming off the tough loss the other night to Memphis. They take on St. Joe's, it's Holiday Hoops, presented by K Jewelers. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Remember Alabama and Oklahoma, coaches Mark Gottfried, Kelvin Sampson, part of Operation Hardwood, the trip to Kuwait. Jay Billis will be in Norman, he also was uh, a part of that very moving trip. See the troops. Eight NCAA coaches and sports personalities, including, as you mentioned, our own Jay Billis, as well as our own Mike Jarvis, coach eight 13 member military basketball teams in a tournament in late August. And it'll be fascinating to hear the tales that Jay was telling me a little bit about it this summer, and it really profoundly oh, yeah. changed him. Well, Tom Izzo was one of those coaches. Can you see Tom Izzo running? Uh, he, he would, would he be a great general or what? <laughs> I think special operations would be Tom Izzo's specialty. Ten turnovers now for Kansas. She make it 11 and 13 for the privateers. And Kansas half court defense has really been outstanding. Particularly the guard play. Quick hands, good ball pressure. Not a lot of alleys. Shot clock winding down towards 10. McNeely, the pull up, not there. Rebound, though, to the Privateers. Harlow's going to try one. Now the ball in the air. Jackson goes for it, can't get it. And it ends up in the hands of Williams, who now has seven. New Orleans has been very, very aggressive on a hustle tonight. Don't have the weaponry, maybe, that Kansas has, but. Uh, They've certainly competed, and they've already played a very difficult December schedule, which has helped them. 
Well, you certainly cannot fault the effort, as he said, especially all the adversity this team's been through. It's Darnell Jackson called for the offensive foul. And, you know, Monty Tao saying earlier, effort and attitude have been great. But, you know, I cannot think of a stranger situation to be put into, and the record just doesn't reflect how well these kids have done. I mean, he was saying, look, there is no blueprint yes, for what happened absolutely. to us. It has never happened to any program in the history of college basketball as Williams hits the long two. Well, good little run right here by New Orleans. This has been a game of droughts. Right now, Kansas, a couple turnovers, and New Orleans proficient in getting back on the board. 44-29, and Bill Self calling a quick timeout. Now, we did tell you New Orleans is going to play its first home game Saturday against Tulane. It will not, however, be in Lakefront Arena, and I think it will become readily apparent as to why not. You see the devastation of the home arena of the privateers and a huge hole in the roof right there. That home game will be played at the Alario Center, which is another arena in New Orleans. Yep. And then they're going to play the rest of the home games this year in a building called the Human Performance Center where they played in the 70s and the 80s. And the thought is perhaps the Lakefront Arena might be ready next season. Well, unless that's a skylight they put in. That was a hole in the roof. In fact, reading today, the Superdome, the NFL is trying to get that back under operation by November 1st. But you're right, Dave, as a, as a former coach, there's nothing really that prepares you for this. Talk about adversity all you want, different kind of adversity, and a sloppy play right there by Rush. Yeah, Rush just wasn't looking, and Williams converts on the other end. Well, good little stretch right here by the privateers. Brandon Rush not paying attention to the inbounds pass. He comes right back. He's not looking. And the privateers take advantage of it. Wayne Williams down to double figures with 11. Lead back down to 13. So it seemed as if Kansas might be able to blow this one out, but has not been the case. Well, the zone has bothered Kansas a little bit. This is a point zone. Julian Wright. Good job by Jeremy Case finding right in the middle of that zone. Always talk about getting the ball to the heart of the zone when you attack it and not relying on the perimeter exclusively. Now Williams. This is Parlo. McNeely. Big three there for Jamie McNeely. A very similar situation to their Pepperdine game early in the year. Kansas now, another one of those droughts, and now you've got Vincent, Hawkins, and Case in there. Con fault on the floor. Kansas, who has been generally solid defensively all night. See the penetration, the kick out, he draws the defender. And McNeely, a point guard with pretty good range, knocks down the open jumper. That foul friend went against Nathaniel Parker, that's four. And we talked about how little depth they have as the alley-oop goes awry there, particularly in the front line for New Orleans. So that is a problem. Parker goes to the bench. Now, Harlow a little bit of a quick trigger and air ball. The privateers get it back and then nearly turn it over. Good hustle there by Manning going down to the floor. And it's going to be New Orleans ball. That looked like it could have been over and back. Couldn't tell if the Kansas player tipped it, but sloppy play right there. And I'll tell you, McNeely had Parlow as open as Parlow will be all night. Mario Feldman is checking into the Kansas lineup. UNO calls a 30 second timeout. Privateers calling a timeout. Like Manning might have a little blood on the face there. Oh, so it's 46-34, Kansas on top, and second half here. I mean, it seemed like Fran as if Kansas was going to be able to blow this thing open. What's happened? Well, remember, Rush and Chalmers started the second half. They were the group that finished the first half on the 11-0 run, but it points to the inconsistency of Kansas still. And Bill Self now goes back to his bench, gets some more pieces, sloppy with the basketball. The zone has worked well for New Orleans, and they've made some shots. I'll tell you, though, I mean, it seems to me that a lot of this, you know, the youth of Kansas obviously really jumps out at you. The top eight scores, freshmen or sophomores, 
I saw Oklahoma State last night right a team that looked great against Tennessee and then just get hammered by UAB I mean it's really pervading the Big 12 this year well it is it's a young league there are some talented players but uh, you know Kansas in my mind does not have a go to guy that you can rely on to get you 15 or 18 every single night Daney shot is blocked. So Kansas continues to dominate inside now, trying to build on that lead a little bit. Right, nice pass to Khan, but he shuffled his feet. And see, it's not it's not selfish play. That ball, that that time that ball moved. Chalmers, Case, Wright, Khan. It's just a matter of finishing the play. Boy. Keith Langford would have been great on his team because he'd averaged about 25 a game with his nose for the ball and his nose for the basket. And now McNeely turns it over. See a few of those calls today in point of emphasis this year. You know, getting back to this inconsistency, the good news is Bill Self has 13 players. The bad news is he has 13 players because He's got so many guys of equal ability, it's hard to really figure who you want to go with as your nine once the season comes along. Big 12. That's a guy who's making it difficult for him. Steven Vinson, the former walk-on, now has six points, and he has played extremely well as he has now for the past few weeks. He has, averaging 18 minutes a game over the last four games. He really bailed Kansas out versus Cal when Mario Chalmers had the six turnovers in 11 minutes. But you see now Chalmers at the two with Vincent at the one. Well, you talked about those 18 minutes per game. I mean, this is a guy, just to give you a little bit of context there, who had averaged about four minutes a game in his career. That's so right. a dramatic increase in playing time. Khan out there inside. He and Moody battling for the rebound. Chalmers wants the three. That's not there. Moody tips it. But it goes to the privateers. So New Orleans still hanging around. It's a 15-point game. Well, Sasha Khan that time missed from point-blank range. He actually shoots the ball sometimes and doesn't even look at the rim. Scramble for the loose ball. McNeely's got it. Malloy hitting there for two. A much more efficient half-court offense by Monty Tao's privateers. Looks like Christian Moody got banged down that last time. There you see Jamie McNeely, one of the leaders of this New Orleans team. We'll hear from him next on just how Hurricane Katrina affected the privateers. McNeely and the privateers down 13. McNeely talking about the impact Hurricane Katrina had on this New Orleans team. We think that we could go through anything now because um, Hurricane Katrina was a lot, um, was a lot to overcome. And um, now that we all did it together and um, we all got back together, it, it definitely helped us um, bond as a team. Interesting, kind of almost a positive spin on, on what they went through. And, you know, that's something that Monty Tao really touched on, too, is, man, if you can get through this, you can get through every, anything. <laughs> Sunbelt shouldn't be so bad. Yeah. Huh? I mean, no kidding. And, and you compound that with, as we talk about, an injury to their best player. But Imani Tao saying, look, we don't have any long-term goals. We're just trying to make it to the next day. And they have done so quite admirably, we consider everything they've been up against this year. Khan inside, and he gets grabbed. Well, Sasha Khan has got to, when he gets the ball one foot from the rim, I don't care how big his defender is, he's got to learn to finish those shots inside. Time a good set play, cross screen inside. We watched the game earlier in the year, Dave, I mentioned earlier, he turns to the basket often without even sighting the rim, and that's not, that's not really a, a good way to be productive around the rim. Khan missing the free throw. It's like a pitcher, not looking at home plate before he throws it. Look for Louis Tiant. <laughs> That's all you Khan missing both of them. Malloy with the rebound. That ball knocked out of bounds. Good quick hands by Case. It ends up going off Dusty Driggs. 
Orleans will go into Sun Belt play, and there's some good basketball being played. Western Kentucky with two outstanding players, Courtney Lee, a pro prospect, Anthony Winchester. Chalmers blocked nice. from behind by Malloy. Second in for the Privateers. Tell you what, New Orleans is out rebounded Kansas tonight. Good effort. Good hustle. On the flip side, inside on the defensive end, Kansas 10 blocks in this game, four for right. Now Case. How about Jeremy Case? Averaging about three minutes a game, early part of the year. Big game against Northern Colorado. Bill Self said he's been one of his best guards in practice. Getting an opportunity tonight. As he said, I mean, in one way, it's a nice problem to have, to have a lot of guys who can step mm -hmm. up. It's the game he misses badly, but. Well, when you have a play like that, Case throwing it up ahead to Chalmers, and Chalmers not looking at him. Adam Case's fault there. So 52-36, Kansas unable to completely put away this New Orleans team. Briggs with the shot clock down to 10. McNeely. New Orleans really is controlling the boards. Yes. They get it back off the Parlow miss. 16 offensive rebounds for the Privateers. Good effort. Undersized but athletic. Malloy. Kansas. Well, Malloy is a guy that's not going to shoot a lot of jumpers, but hadn't been real effective in the lane. Well, look at that number. 17 turnovers, she's 14 field goals made. That really tells the story. 26% from the field, Fred. Well, and on the other hand, Kansas not really taking advantage of all those turnovers. And we see the lineup again. They've got Case in there. They've got Vincent in there. It's interesting, Bill Self saying, you know, the guys who are the best athletes, the best players, in quotes, aren't necessarily the guys who give us the best chance to win. And that's kind of the dilemma yes. that he's fighting right now, friend. No, that's really, as we mentioned earlier, it's great to have 13 guys who you have confidence in, but it's really hard to get a rhythm. It's going to get to a point during the Big 12 season where he's going to have to have two or three unhappy guys that aren't playing as many minutes as they like, and we haven't seen Micah Downs tonight. Downs has not played at all. Donald's All-American is... Another three from Jeremy Case, so he is now just two points shy of his career high. Yep. He's there against Northern Colorado. And he's going to make it tough on Bill Self. It's a good problem to have, but Jeremy Case, the coach's son. Emphatic jam there for Parker. In truth, though, I mean, is it really a good problem to have? I mean, it seems to be you bring in kids who are this highly touted, McDonald's All-Americans. They want to play right away. That's right. C.J. Childs. Down his first two of the game. It's a dilemma when you don't have seven or eight step up consistently every night, and that's what they haven't had. I mentioned earlier, if you could figure out who their go-to guy is, let me know, because I'm not <laughs> sure. But when you have a guy like Jeremy Case fight for playing time, that is a good thing. Williams, not there, right with the rebound. Now here comes Kansas Vincent. Another one of those guys who's contributed, but he has it knocked away. Williams the other way. Williams didn't see Chalmers coming, and Mario picked his pocket. Well, good effort by Chalmers on the defensive end, and Bill Self will like that. Vincent, not there. And on the baseline was Manning, so it's going to be Kansas ball when we come back. Bill Self. The lead is at 19, C.J. Giles doing his part. It's good, it's good for you. 19-point lead for Kansas. 
over New Orleans. Holiday Hoops presented by K Jewelers. What a difficult season it has been for New Orleans. This is a team, of course, displaced due to Hurricane Katrina. Had to spend the fall at the University of Texas at Tyler. This, the first time they went back to their dorms. And you see in an absolute state of disrepair, completely devastated by the hurricane. You saw some of the clothes the guys were wearing. I mean, it's interesting. They fled New Orleans essentially with nothing, Fran. I mean, Monty Tao was saying how so many people stepped up from Adidas, a bunch of schools, NC yep. State, St. John's, DePaul, or somebody mentioned. They sent balls. They sent socks. They sent VHS tapes. I mean, they literally had nothing. They thought they were leaving for two or three days, and then you see two months later, it's the first time they get back to their camp. Well, and one of the light moments was that Monty Tao said it, it took the hurricane to get a shoe deal, you know? <laughs> but Adidas stepped up, as you mentioned, and was very good to them, and uh, it's just something that's indescribable and it's hard enough when you have to take classes and go to practice every day for an 18 19 year old kid but to go through what they've gone through is uh, unimaginable whistle on a three second violation on the jayhawks you mentioned going to practice every day they had to work their schedule around ut tyler and yep. ut tyler was a wonderful host and everything the New Orleans players have said nothing but positive oh, yeah. comments. Yeah. However, I mean, they still have a basketball season themselves. So the New Orleans team was practicing off at around 7 o'clock in the morning. Well, I asked Jamie McNeely today. Harlow, the big three. Uh, really catch and shoot. And I asked Jamie McNeely, I said, he's from, he's, from, he's from Canada. I said, if you ever get back near Tyler, are you going to go through there? He said, absolutely. I'll never forget what those people did for us. Follow. The, the very slight silver lining is Bo McCaleb comes back next year. Harlow, McNeely are back. Jacob Manning's back. Daney's back. So this will be a good group and will certainly be toughened by adversity. Good hands by Robinson now. Rush. Good ball movement. Vincent thought about shooting him and backs it back out. And that might be it for Nathaniel Parker. Bell is full of number 44, Nathaniel Parker. This was a dilemma for Monty Town. Not a I lot of depth inside. A game team. effort by Parker. You talked about New Orleans and the loss of McCaleb. Sun Belt Conference in general, I and mean, this is a team that was expected to compete in the Sun Belt. This is a good program. I mean, this is a New Orleans program that has been over 517 of the last 20 seasons, yep. Fran, and it has been a struggle this year. Obviously, a ton of it having to do with the hurricane, but the injuries are huge too. But certainly, Imani Tao wanting to send the message that we are back and we are a symbol of this city. This city will be back as well. Well, this is a mulligan for Monty Tao, I'll tell you. Just to put a team on the floor has been uh, an enormous undertaking. Rush going to try the three. That's not there. It's batted around, and it's going to be New Orleans basketball. And I, I'll tell you, David, you know, I, of course, I grew up, Monty Tao was a guy I loved watching play. He was my size. All the short guys like watching right. Monty Tao play. But he, he was a feisty, feisty competitor at NC State. There you see Monty Tao, as you mentioned, played on that national championship yep. team. We mentioned David Thompson, Tommy Burleson, Tim Stoddard, Mo Rivers. That's a team that beat UCLA in 1974 in overtime in Greensboro. That's a, that's a loss that Bill Walton still laments. They had a big lead in UCLA in that overtime. David Thompson may be the greatest player to ever play in the ACC, and that's that's not hyperbole. It's a lot of people, a lot of people's opinions. Well, Tao, just a beloved figure at NC State, is number 25 has been retired as Williams hits one of two. Now Robinson. This Kansas team, Dave, even as they search for that identity we talk about, they play very, very unselfish on offense. Williams, strong to the hoop, but nowhere to go with it. It's going to be New Orleans ball. Harlow. 
Quick hands there by Chalmers. What a play by Mario Chalmers. And he gets fouled by McNeely. Well, Chalmers with the defense. Also solid offense tonight. Steven Vincent, a catalyst, draws two defenders, and then the kick out to Russell Robinson. The ball does move. And if there's a bright spot tonight for Mario Chalmers, it's been an excellent job on the defensive end, the quick hands, and then the presence of mind to get that shot at the basket. Chalmers hits the free throw. Five points now for the Anchorage native, born and raised in Anchorage, but actually his family from North Carolina. His father ended up stationed in Alaska by the Air Force. And his father, Ronnie, now a member of this Kansas staff, the director of basketball operations for the Jayhawks. Right, his, his father was his high school coach, and I think Mario Chalmers feeling more comfortable maybe at the off-guard spot. Doesn't have to worry about getting all five players involved in the offense. Harlow. That's a three. Catch and shoot it. The guy that made six threes against a very good Vandy team. Giles, that's not there. Giles almost, it's almost like he hadn't touched the ball in a while and had to get a shot up. Winding down towards the final four minutes here in Lawrence. The game Kansas broke open late in the first half. Malloy is fouled and gets the hoop as well. Went on a 17-0 run that straddled the end of the first half and the beginning of the second. So a timeout on the floor gives us an opportunity to remind you more holiday hoops tomorrow night on ESPN2. It's the Ohio Bobcats and number 19, Kentucky, 8 p.m. Eastern time. Holiday Hoops presented by K Jewelers. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Athens, Ohio, a place I know well. Spent yes, you do. Six years as a Bobcat. And Tim O'Shea has got a solid club. Michael Green, the senior. Leon Williams, a terrific sophomore. Love, love their basketball. Down in Athens in the Mid-American Conference. We're talking about tough leagues, and we were talking about the Missouri Valley earlier. There are no easy road games in the Mid-American Conference. And they're all bus trips. Yeah, bus <laughs> leagues. And on those bus rides. Jacob Manning going to the free throw line. I, think I might have said Malloy. Manning going to the line for the Privateers, trying to finish off the three-point play. Well, we talked about New Orleans having those scoring droughts otherwise. Pretty solid performance tonight. And Manning does convert on the three-point play. So six now for him. A 16-point game. One of the common, denomina common denominators for Kansas this year is Stephen Vincent has been on the floor, Dave. And they've played pretty well on offense particularly. Changing defense, little zone. Unable to get the roll is Jackson and New Orleans coming the other way. This is Driggs. A Parlo showing off the range. Well, excellent catch and shoot. One of the things he does, he doesn't dip the basketball. When you catch it at your eye level and shoot it from there, you're going to get it off quicker. Carlo has 16 right inside the arc. Cannot get the roll. So now here comes Carlo. Game not over yet. 64-51. Now it's been gritty for New Orleans. Kansas again, a team offensively still trying to find what they do best, but defensively pretty good. And Carlo offensive foul. Swing in the elbow, number two on James Carlo. The lead is 13 in Lawrence. The Jayhawks trying to wrap up win number seven on the season. Three minutes to go. Back in Lawrence, Kansas, where the Jayhawks have a 13-point lead. Final three minutes. Dave Revson, Fran Priscilla with you. And Fran, 
Where does this Kansas team fit into what is a very confusing Big 12 to this point? Well, let, let me show you my New Year's resolutions, and we'll, we'll kind of cover that. First thing, Kansas, their New Year's resolution, try to find a set rotation. And that's something that they've worked on tonight. Texas and Oklahoma settle down their point guard spots. Texas Tech needs to find a third scorer. And Billy Gillespie's got to leave College Station at <laughs> some point during the season. It is mandated by the <laughs> conference schedule. You cannot play all home games. But he has done a great job. And I'll tell you, Aggie fans don't care right now because he's building a winning tradition. They've got some good players. Joseph Jones may be the best young big guy in the conference. But a lot of good young players in this league. And we've seen a lot of inconsistency because of them. Right, that's one of the guys who play feel like he's had a better game here today. Well, because he's played off the basketball and only has to worry now about himself. And that's not selfishness, but it's hard to be able to worry about your four teammates when you're still trying to figure out what you need to do. Uh, Drake's had an opportunity there. This is McNeely. And Dave, we talk about the rotation. Remember last year, Kansas in the middle of that great run. I think they won their first 19, but they had injuries to guys like uh, Simeon, Giles, Moody. So there will be injuries, and that depth will come in handy. More depth than maybe anybody in this league. Offensive foul there on Malloy. Number three on Sean Malloy. And the impressive thing about Julian Wright, here's a McDonald's All-American who somewhat plays out of position. Bill Self uses him at both the three and the four, more four now, but does a lot of dirty work, which uh, you don't really associate with a guy who's a McDonald's All-American. Usual. This is a kid who only averaged about a dozen points per game his junior year in high school. Mm -hmm. Played on some good teams at Homewood Flossmoor in Chicagoland. Nice pass. Great feed inside by Chalmers and Jackson hits. A good They'll decision. Go nice decision. Chalmers had the jumper. The defender closed. And then he found Darnell Jackson. This is textbook. And again, the maturation of these young players. And a good decision and a big smile on the face of Mario Chalmers. Good finish by Jackson. Bill Self talks about Jackson's toughness. We've seen that tonight. So we continue to learn about this Kansas team. We'll learn even more a week from Saturday. They host Kentucky on ESPN. One, uh, two teams, really, usually at the top of the polls that are still finding their way. Harlow, the miss there. Russell Robinson has been solid tonight. Jeremy Case, Vincent. Certainly want to take an opportunity to, Fran, to wish New Orleans well as they head back for that home one opener. Minute, minute, minute. Much anticipated against Tulane on Saturday. And it's been oh! beautiful. How are you? How about that? I think that was a shot pass. Russell Robinson smiling. Julian Wright on the receiving end. He'll claim it to be afterwards, I guarantee you that. Well, and how about Tulane with Dave Dickerson building that program? As Drake's hits. Tulane back home in New Orleans the other night, beat Richmond, and talk about a guy, first coaching job. Watch Russell Robinson here. Now, Tennessee has a play where they call it a shot pass. And right there, Russell Robinson, I don't know, I don't David. Know. <laughs> That's that old Tom Davis. That's play. right. You know, Bruce Pearl employs that. Russell Robinson will certainly tell everybody after he down the shot pass. Of course he was. That's what he said right now. What you think of that pass, man? <laughs> but just to finish the thought, I mean, it, I, really an unprecedented situation for both, as you yep. mentioned, Tulane and New Orleans. And really impressed in talking to these New Orleans players, the way that they have handled the adversity. Oh, that guy. We talk about guys fighting for playing time. Practices are certainly going to continue to be intense here at Kansas with this depth. You know what, Dave? I love, I love the effort of New Orleans tonight. Been on the road all December. They've really battled. Had a couple scoring droughts. Good effort by Monty Tao's team.
So Kansas wins it by the final of 73 to 56. The Jayhawks do improve to seven and four on the year. And Monty Town's team, which played well, finishes now uh, falls to two and eight as they lose it 73 to 56 in a long and arduous trip for New Orleans. Ends here in Kansas as they will head back home to take on Tulane on Saturday. So continue to watch Holiday Hoops presented by K Jewelers. We're with you throughout the weekend. Bill Self picking up the win, 73-56. Kansas a 17-point win over New Orleans. Three, the Dale Earnhardt story coming up next here on ESPN2. For Fran Fraschilla and our entire ESPN crew, I'm Dave Revson. Good night from Lawrence. All right, Rever, Scott Reese, Steve Lavin, Rick Majerus back here in the studio. An impressive performance, Rick, from the young Jayhawks. What jumped out at you tonight? Julian Wright, he continues to get better, not only in scoring, he's our leading scorer, but in all aspects of play. But I, what I particularly like about him is for a young guy, he's moving without the ball, positioning himself. His off-the-ball defense has gotten significantly better. He's in stance. He's got some vision. I think he's a, he's a real keeper on the come, and I think he'll eclipse Rush soon, not this year, but perhaps next. And Steve, that schedule shaping up pretty well early on in the conference season. Well, yeah, you have to remember with this extremely talented Kansas team, they're going to continue to get better with each practice and each game experience. And when you look at their schedule, they have Yale coming up. That would put them at 8-4. and four. Then a big showdown with Kentucky at home. And this is a Kentucky team that won't have Randolph Morris back yet. And then they open up conference, uh, Big 12 play. So this team, by the second half of league play, could be very dangerous. You have to remember, Bill Self has never had a team that didn't finish in the upper half of conference play. That's going back to Oral Roberts, back to Tulsa, to Illinois, and now obviously at Kansas. So he's a heck of a coach. He has young, talented players. They're going to only get better with each practice. And uh, that Kentucky game, by the way, January 7th on ESPN. And uh, speaking of the Jayhawks, their coach Bill Self standing by with our Fran Fraschilla. Fran, take it away. Thanks, guys. First of all, Bill, uh, what were your impressions? We, we made a big deal about New Orleans. Oh, yeah. Talk about those guys and what they've been through in terms of the adversity. Well, I mean, I can't. I don't know exactly, but but because uh, you, you haven't lived it. But uh, you know, they, we don't have bad days. You know, at least we shouldn't compared to a lot of stuff they've gone through. And I understand they even had a couple of guys had to be airlifted out of there, and, and then not even to be back and wear other people's clothes. And I mean, just to be relocated from family and friends, it's it's got to be tough. But. Monty and staff's done a great job, and, and, and they're going to be a good team. Uh, they play hard, and they're good at they're uh, athletic on the perimeter, and they got a couple of big horses inside, so they're going to be they're going to have a good team. But I, I'm I'm glad that uh, uh, I'm really glad they came in and played well tonight. To be quite honest with you, because they deserve to let the nation see kind of yeah. what they're fighting through. Well, let's talk about you guys. Uh, you you have a deep rotation, and deep, you have some too deep. Yeah. Well, but I mean, how now as you get ready for Big 12 play? Yeah, a lot of guys in spots play very well tonight. How do you as a coach now put these pieces together as you get ready for conference play? Well, tonight, you know, our bench carried us. Uh, Mario and and uh, uh, obviously uh, Jeremy, Steven, and uh, Julian. They may have been the four best players that we had in the game. We got to get our starters playing better. We certainly need CJ and Sasha to give us more than what they uh, uh, what they did tonight. But I think it'll still work itself out. Uh, uh, we got to have Brimmer shooting in the game. We've got good big guys. We didn't play like it tonight, but I, I can see that a couple of the freshmen really coming. I would be surprised if those guys start getting a lot more playing time. And finally, if there's one area that you say, if we do this better, we're going to be a good team, what would that be? We waste way too many possessions. If, if we wasted 10 possessions tonight off of, you know, uh, carelessness and, and uh, trying to play too fast, although I want to play fast, but trying too hard. And uh, if we could just eliminate half the careless turnovers, we'll score five more points a game and everybody leave out of here happy every night. But uh, uh, certainly, I think that's the biggest obstacle right now. Well, there'll be a lot of people happy tonight. That was a good win. Yeah, thank Congratulations. You All right, okay. thanks. See you, Fran. Thank Back you. to you guys. All right, Fran, thanks. And again, we remind you of the upcoming schedule for Kansas, and we highlight that Kentucky game on January 7th, noon Eastern, on ESPN.